Sarah's back at the Red Brick Redo with four new rooms for you. In case you're thinking about what can be achieved with a simple makeover, this is what I want to show you. Get ready for a kid's lounge, two guest bedrooms, and a bathroom. What kind of space do you like to design best? One of my favorites, in case you wanted to know, is I think it's super fun to take an area that is kind of a nothing zone and reinterpret it. This is a pretty grand upper hall, like yeah. huge circulation space. So I am now here in what I call the kids lounge, which is directly outside of both of their bedrooms. Formerly known as the completely underutilized upper hallway that had no purpose. Who knows, maybe there's something here where this they could great sitting area. play, you could almost yeah. just float a day bed. Now it is a kid's hangout and work zone. So we have a pair of chaises tucked here in a south facing window. Plus, because we now know and everybody has a full appreciation for how important the work from home situation is, we've made sure that we've tucked in desks wherever possible. So we have an after school work zone for homework or if this is for Zoom days at school. And it is all just here kind of helping support the bedrooms that flow off this upper hall. But the main thing it's doing is acting like a welcoming beacon to this second floor area because before there was just nothing going on. Let's talk about lighting up here. We found these really fun industrial inspired fixtures. And if you're thinking, ooh, I like those, they are in a rich, smoky, teal kind of gray tone. It hails from our Swedish friends at Ikea. This is a super affordable fixture. And I wanted to do this because this house is located just three blocks from the water's edge. And our client always wanted it to have a bit of a coastal nod to it. And so I think these light fixtures are perfectly appropriate. They tie in really well with the deep color of the railing that wrap through this upper hall and lead down to the floor below. And then they also support the color palette of what's happening in this little lounge zone. And I'm sitting here, really, I just want to be, I just want to be reclining and lounging. Do you recognize this pillow fabric that's behind me? Yes, I pulled this out of my stash of fabric remnants at the office. This was something that I used in the cozy home office zone in Sarah Off The Grid season two. And it is a favorite fabric of mine. If you are somebody who likes a watery palette, this is a fabulous choice. And part of the thing about this little lounge zone here is it has to connect to the other rooms. So off one side is Gemma's room done in mint and soft blues and a little bit of peach. And on the other side is the guest room. So let's talk about the guest room. Check this out. This is a bonanza of blue. And you won't be surprised to see me using blue because you know how much I do love blue. And I feel like this is a pattern play of rich blues in the best way that I know how to use them. And I'm often asked questions about how do I mix and match pattern fabrics? So I'm going to show you this. We started with the wallpaper. Look at this fabulous, Asian inspired. This is sort of a toile pattern and it has beautiful rich blues. I think this is a gorgeous wallpaper and the second I found it I just knew that this had to be the guest room. What do you think? Do you like it? How are we doing so far? Yeah, you like it? When I'm thinking about mixing and matching patterns, usually it starts with that inspiration, that hero pattern, and that's definitely the wallpaper. Next thing is I like to layer a bunch of other patterns in with it. So in this case, we have the toile that's on the wallpaper sort of acts as though, let's call it a floral. Then we have a large scale geometric in the form of a flat woven kaleem on the floor. Then we have a medium-sized pattern, which is that lovely little 
fan style fabric that's on the pillows. And then we move to a couple of solids and textures. So we have a velvet pillow that's on the bed. We have the textured fabric that is on the headboard and also a soft chenille that is on the desk chair. Are you noticing how amazing this bed is? Look at this bed. What a find. I was super excited. This bed is from Ikea. This is an in-stock find, easy to assemble, and looks really fabulous. I like the way the headboard has this curved profile. Feels like it's just a beautiful little cocoon. What a nice thing to have for a guest room. It feels light and airy. The bed is elevated off the floor, which means it's easy to vacuum underneath. I always like that. You can tell I am a fan of this bed, a big fan of the bed. If you're looking at using a classical color combination and you're thinking about how to make it feel more modern, then think about juxtaposing it with a different wood tone. So I think the classical interpretation would be that these rich blues would be paired with dark woods like walnut or mahogany. Instead, we've decided to go, this is an oyster washed stain on the furniture here. So it makes it feel a bit lighter and also all of these pieces have a more streamlined proportion. So crisp lines that balance out the more classical traditional pattern that's in that strong wallpaper. So if I'm using a strongly patterned wallpaper that's more lyrical, that's more fanciful, that's more curly, I will generally offset that. Think about how a streamlined silhouette on the furniture is going to help achieve the goal you're looking for. Does that make sense? Also, play it simple when it comes to the lighting. So hanging from the ceiling here, we have a basket light. This is just a beautiful, soft, contemporary string light thin string wrapped around a metal frame. It has this eggshell creamy tone to it and it casts a soft glow around the room. We don't need a chandelier. We don't need sparkle. We don't need drama. All we need is something that has a bit of glow and a little bit of warmth and overall illumination in the room. Something that's really important to me in a guest room is I want it to feel soft and I want it to feel calm and I want it to have a sense of privacy. So for these drapes, we used ready-to-go drapery panels from Ikea and we had our seamstress just put curtain tape across the top so we could put a traditional pinch pleat across them so they look more tailored and structured and then we hung them with brushed metal rods. When it comes to hardware, just make sure you're always tying your hardware colors together. So if you're wondering what color of finish should my drapery hardware be, make sure that you consider what is on the furniture. So in this case, we have a brushed nickel finish on the hardware on the side tables and on the desk, and we've carried that through to use the exact same thing on the drapery hardware. Make sense? It's as easy as that. Okay, so that bedroom is all about the blues. The next room that we have, we have not one but two guest rooms in this house. How amazing is that? So that this family of three can have another whole family come and stay. That was the goal, was to really prioritize having guest spaces. And if you're lucky enough to have not one but two guest rooms, oh my goodness, how amazing is that? And we call the second guest room, we call it the cloud room because it has this great wallpaper, which is a cream background, and the pattern is created through a series of polka dots in the softest gray tone. Think of a foggy day, and that is the tone in this room. It is all things soothing and textural and soft and inviting, and I think those are just all of the ingredients that you need when you are thinking about a guest room. You need a soft foundation in a guest room. So we have a 100% wool, nubbly, sort of macrame inspired carpet that's on the floor just for that foundation of quiet and calm and cozy. We have a headboard that's covered in a gray linen, a nice thick, heavyweight Belgian linen accented with cream piping so you can appreciate 
the sculpted form of this headboard. It's very simple. We start with the wallpaper and there's a cream and gray in the wallpaper. Then for the headboard that layers in front of it, I like to invert that. So I like to reverse the color concept that's on the wallpaper so that you can create a strong accent with the headboard. So that's what this gray headboard with the cream piping does. We've layered in white and gray sheets on the bed for softness and layering here. Just making sure that when you're outfitting your guest room, it's not about spending a lot, it's about thinking about whether people will have all the amenities they need. So I like layers. You wanna make sure that the bed is comfy, it has soft pillows, great reading lights. I'm really a big fan of these bedside lamps. Look at them, a very simple form, carved in alabaster, they're nice and tall. You always wanna make sure that you consider the proportion of your lamps with the proportion of the headboard. And I will say that if you were to ask me what one of the most common issues I see is, bedside lights that are too small. You wanna make sure that the light is coming out of the lamp and casting down to hit whatever you're reading. You don't want your bedside light down here if your book's gonna be up here. I think your lamps should be at least the height of the headboard. Here's a trick, if you're trying to decide what lamp is best, try taking a picture. Use your phone and pretend you are doing a photo shoot. Take a photograph of it and then look and think, how does that proportion look? Does that feel right or should I try one of the lamps from another room? And believe me, that is what I do. That is exactly what I did here in this room. The lamps that are in this room now are not the lamps that were in this room on the first day. We swapped them out, we changed them around, and we came up with a new solution. So obviously that doesn't work if you're using really strong colors, but if you are using neutral toned lamps, you can always swap them out to get the best effect. I said at the beginning that lighting was really important in this house and we don't have any traditional lighting. Everything about making this house feel fresh and new and now was about infusing some fun contemporary lighting and that is exactly what this fixture does in the guest room. It's an LED fixture, super energy efficient, interesting shape and profile. Sometimes it's the unexpected element that leads to the success of a room. Now, let's take one, I got one last little room to show you. Do you have time for one more little tour to see a super quick makeover that we did in the Jack and Jill bathroom. So there's a Jack and Jill bathroom that connects the two bedrooms, the two guest rooms. How great is that? If you come to visit this family, you get a little sweet. How sweet is that? Pretty sweet. And this had uh, just an unattractive vanity. It needed a little bit of personality. So no here's- No shower curtain. No shower curtain. It had nothing, man. It had nothing. Nothing. Why are there toys in the shower? So this is an important area for Sam. Okay. This is where he has his whole Nerf gun. Okay. Here. So we decided that we would just fix all the deficiencies in this bathroom. It had no color, so we started by trying to pull the color out of the floor. There's a little accent of mosaic in the floor that is Ming green marble. One of my all-time favorites. So just a soft green was painted on the wall. The challenge we had in this bathroom is it's tiny. It's really, really shallow. And the original vanity was just taking up too much space. You could barely get to the shower. So without renovating the entire bathroom, we decided to make just a few minor, minor tweaks. So we got a single Ikea cabinet. And what we did was we just held it off the wall so all the plumbing can run in behind it. And then we created a waterfall profile of three quarter inch thick marble for the sink. And what we did was we did a vessel sink that sits on top. And why you ask did we do a vessel sink? Because sometimes when you have an undermount sink, what you need to keep in mind is it's not just the size of the sink that you see, it's the rim that also is included. And sometimes by the time you include the rim of the sink with the depth of the sink, with the depth you need for the faucet, there just isn't enough space from front to back in the overall depth. That was our issue here. So we moved the plumbing up into the walls. We now have a wall mount faucet 
and we've managed to make this a really shallow overall vanity depth. It has storage, it has some counter space, it's got a full size sink and a really fabulous contemporary looking faucet. We topped it with a hexagonal, sort of an extended hexagonal mirror, something that is fresh and fun and contemporary a wall mount sconce. We used the existing sconce placement that was here. We were trying to really keep our eye focused on costs. And then a piece of remnant fabric that I had in the office was turned into a shower curtain. Talk about a simple makeover, but in case you're thinking about what can be achieved with a simple makeover, this is what I want to show you. Take a look at this before and now take a look at this after. And now that is the end of this episode. I hope you will subscribe and turn on notifications and join me next time. Bye.